What is going on fans and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching another video. We are about to jump into another how to. This is basically going to be a follow up to a how to that I did a while back on how to set the DB levels of each speaker using an SPL meter. The process is still the same. However, I found or I, I, I come up with more or less a dynamic method of applying DBs to your speakers and it yields better results. The integration is seamless and the sound is much more dynamic than applying the DBs the way that we did it in the previous video. So in the previous video, we were applying static values to each speaker based on its role in the home theater. So the front stage was getting 80 dB, the surrounds were getting 77 and the Atmos was getting 80 and we were setting the LFE to 84. Well, a more dynamic and more efficient method of applying decibels is now to the gist of it is now to first take a measurement of what the current values are based on what's applied from the calibration and then we can make changes based on those values. So as I said, the method is still, the process is still the same. Mount your SPL meter at your primary seating position um, at about ear level. Um, in the previous video, I was using a handheld SPL meter. I'm now using the Umic One um, mic from Mini DSP and I'm using REW as my SPL meter. So SPL meter is mounted at ear level, primary seating position. REW is my SPL meter. The scenario is we just finished a calibration. We've already set the we've already set the crossovers on all of the speakers, and now we want to set the dB levels of each speaker. So with this new process, what I want to do is first measure each speaker, what it's currently doing, what the values are currently set at from the calibration, and then we can make adjustments for there. So let us go into our test tone. We need to turn on the test tone. Our test tone is on. Then we need to set the levels. Now, before we get into levels, um, I wanted to show this. This right here is a sheet that I did a simple sheet I did in Word. It basically shows the the physical layout um, of my speakers in my home theater. So it makes it a little easy for me to write down the current value. So I'm gonna go through, take a measurement, write down the values, and then make adjustments after that. So let's start with the front left speaker. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Well, no, I got the other camera. So the front left speaker is currently at 74 dB. Front right is also 74. Center is 77. About 45 and a half. 74 and a half, I mean. 74.5 dB for that. About 75 dB. About 75 dB. Seventy-seven. Seventy-four. Seventy-five. 
75.5. And LFE. LFE is about 84. So now based on those values, what I want to do is set, I want to move my front stage to 80 dB. So I'm going to move this guy, this is my MVP, I'm going to move my center channel up to 80 dB and based on that value, it's currently at 77, we're going to move them up to 80. We're going to use that difference, that three decibel difference from 77 to 80 dB and apply it around the board to each speaker based on its current value. So rather than setting 80, 80, 80 to uh, my entire front stage LFE to 84 or whatever, uh, we are going to just move every th every speaker by 3 dB. So I'm going to start with my MVP. It's going to start off. Uh, we're going to move him up to 80 dB. And we're going to move everybody else by that same 3 decibels. With the exception of LFE. Opposed to leaving LFE at 84 dB. I'm going to drop him down. I think 84 dB is a little heavy. Um, so I'm going to drop him down to match the center channel. That 84 dB that's on the LFE, we're going to match him with the center channel. So let's do that right quick. We're going to start with center channel. So let's go over here. Let's move him up to 80 dB. There we go. Center is now at 80. We'll go back to my fronts. We're gonna move them by three decibels. So from 74, we're gonna move him up to 77. There we go, he's at 77. Let's move this guy from 74 up to 77 dB as well. There we go, he's at 77. This guy right here we're going to move him up to 77.5. There you go. Right there. This guy right here. He's at 75. We're going to move him up to 78. There we go. This guy behind me, 78. Right there. This next speaker, he gets 80. Atmos. 77. And 78.5. And LFE, LFE, we're going to drop him down to 80. I already get, have LFE calibrated through the uh, mini DSP, so I know negative 10 on my um, 
receiver is about 80 DB, is slightly high, about 81 ish. But um, yeah, so 80, so 80 on the LFE. Everything. Well, we get the gist of it. I'm not going to keep saying this. It's time to redundant. But that's it. Um, and you'll find out that this is more dynamic. The sound is better off. And the reason being is because when you run calibration, um, which is it's one of those important things that it's a must do. So many people, I see it all the time where people don't even run calibration, um, which is a big no-no for home theater. If you want the best sound, you have to run calibration. But during calibration, you feed your receiver a bunch of information. It then processes that information and it makes the necessary changes um, to make your system, to give you the best sound of your system in that environment. Everyone's room is different. So based on the acoustics of your room, the calibration is a big necessity because it's going to adjust your speakers based on what it should sound like in that room, based on the angle, the distance, um, you know, of a particular speaker. If I, I could have one speaker sitting in a corner that may not need to be at the same dB level as a different speaker, as the center speaker may sound louder. So the dB levels are going to fluctuate based on the angle, based on the distance, based on that particular speaker. There's a lot of different attributes that take place within your home theater in which may cause a speaker to have a different dB level. So applying static, uh, applying static values to every speaker will only work in a perfect environment. If your room is acoustically perfect, your speakers are, have precision angles and precision distance settings and all of that, that's the only time in which applying those dynamic or those those static values will actually work so this way you take what the the calibration is saying based on where this speaker is based on its angle and so forth this is the db level that this particular speaker should be at so that at the end of the day sound hits that seating area at the at the uh, the, the appropriate time in the appropriate manner and it all comes together harmoniously and it sounds perfect. The sound, when you do it this way, sound is much more dynamic. You can actually hear sound moving a lot more. Uh, pieces, uh, there, it's more spatial, so to speak. Um, the, the Atmos pops a little more. Um, and, it, and it just works much better. So I encourage using that same method um, that I outlined in the, in the previous video. But when it comes to applying how much db to go uh to apply to each speaker this method is going to work out much better i just happen to 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 like the 80 db and and basically the 80 is only sliding uh is only sliding the bar a little bit so basically it's saying at reference level i want this speaker to be at 80 db well, at least the pink noise is going to be at 80 dB if you're playing content, it's actually going to be higher. But that's all it's doing. You can use this same method, whether it's 80, whether it's 75, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. It's only saying it's going to be louder at reference level. So when you turn your volume up, it's just going to be, if you set your system to 77, if you want to set your center to 77, that just means I'm going to be 3 dB louder than you at reference level. That's all that's saying. So use this method and I will assure you that it's going to give you better sound than trying to apply static values to each speaker. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. I'll get back to you.